Hi everybody, this is Chris from iSolutions again and I'm here to show you a little bit about what we've got cooking in the iSolutions lab and today I'm really excited to share this demo with you. It's a database that I created for myself. No one's ever seen it before and um, I'm happy to uh, get some other eyeballs on it besides myself and it's, uh, it also involves uh, managing one of my favorite uh, types of data and that's uh, football related data. You may remember this layout if you've watched some of these videos before. This is uh, in a video that you can find on our YouTube channel or on FileMakerHTML5.com that's called the Depth Chart Demo. And the idea behind this is that um, we it's important to me to record all the players in the NFL and all the teams that they're on, but also what position they play. So these are all the different positions broken down into different columns. And also the uh, order in which they, they play. So in, in, uh, in sports and in football here, uh, it matters who the starter is. So that's the number one person, and then the backup is the number two, and then there's a second backup, they're number three, and I need to record all this stuff. So what I did is I, I created, instead of doing it all manually and updating numbers and putting X's for starters, I did this thing where the user can click in here, drag and drop the quarterback's name, and then the FileMaker um, database takes over from there and actually does, runs a script where it updates it and does the, uh, the uh, starter uh, as well, and it shows up graphically. And um, that's not what I'm showing you here today. What I'm showing you is my favorite implementation of HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS inside of a FileMaker web viewer, and it's what I call the Team Tree Navigation. I'm going to click this little button over here, and I created this because what I wanted to do was uh, be able to navigate to any player on any team in the entire NFL. So what I've got is this big crazy looking circle that I call the Team Tree, and it links to every starting player in the NFL. So I can pick on a certain team if I'd like to, and I can navigate to them, but um, I'll show you. I created sort of a filtering way to do this to make it a little bit more manageable. So you'll notice that I'm unchecking the tight ends and running backs here. It makes it a little bit easier for me to see. And I'm gonna scroll down to a certain team. And this is my favorite part, the sort of animated effect. And I can go all over the place uh, from one team to another. And it navigates to, uh, a sort of a node or a, a series of nodes that uh, allow me to click on, and this is again is in the web viewer, click on a player's name, and what it does is it pops up a window, uh, What I and then I call this window the dashboard. Uh, this is all the information about a player that I'd ever want to know to help me make decisions on them, and all I had to do is look at this, and it tells me their matchups and their strength and data and their opponents and blah, 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 blah. Clearly, I have no life. Um, but then it allows me to go back and navigate to any other player. And as you can see, I can move around and check all the different positions that I want and uh, really um, see every single starting player um, on any roster in the entire NFL. I have a lot of fun with that, and I use this too much. Um, the way that this works is it's a web viewer, of course. So if I go into layout mode, it's a web viewer, gives you a little bit of preview there, but it's based on this calculation. I've created a table in the context of uh, the league. I just call it the nav table. And um, what you're seeing here is uh, the calculation that I've created to draw that web viewer. The calculation uh, includes references to different uh, style sheets that I'm using. I have two different style sheets and uh, references to three different JavaScript. I use a familiar X canvas JavaScript here and there's a specialized one just for this functionality called jit.js. Uh, but the key here is this thing in the middle, this team tree schedules list calculation. That's what's actually creating a large array of the data. And since really that's all this is, is a nested array of data, um, I had to create calculations that do that. So let me switch over for a second and show you about this. In previous videos, I've talked about the ability to create arrays inside of your HTML uh, for the JavaScript to parse that could be div tags or uh, tables in HTML tables or line breaks or whatever it is. Uh, but today I'm showing you an example of uh, something that's called J a JSON object or uh, JSON, J-S-O-N, actually stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And what it is, it's a lightweight data interchange format. And unlike uh, some of the other data. Uh, it's uh, By the way, in this technique, this is exactly the same thing as what I've been talking about before, but instead of creating a series of div tags or an array of div tags or, or table rows, I'm just using this format. And the reason I use this format is because, as you can see, 
it's easy for humans to read. It, it's based off of this name value pair concept, it's something very similar to what we used to do back in Flash in the old days. Um, and it gives us the name of the element or the field name in database language. And then it gives us the um, actual data that's stored inside the field next to it. So name, data, or field, data. And then what you can actually do, what's interesting about it, because JSON's built on two structures. It's a collection of these name value pairs, but then also an ordered list of values. So here I can say data, and then I create this array of, again, um, the field and then the value, the field and the value, and the field and the value, and so on and so on. And what's neat about this in this particular example is that um, what I can do, so this is a, a calculation that I create down at the, at the level of the player, right? So if I scroll over to my players database, you'll see I've created a calc here that takes all the data that's right inside the, and of course it's an unstored calc like all the others in this example. So anytime somebody updates this, it gets, it'll uh, update and propagate throughout my JavaScript in the web viewer. But I just created a, uh, a list of arrays, ID, the player ID, the name, the, the full name and the position, band is what I use to describe the team, and the relation, and so on. And here at the very end, I'm putting an FMP URL. That just happens to be another one of these values that I'm showing in the array, and inside the JavaScript, I've instructed it to actually launch that FMP URL. And what the FMP URL is doing is um, just going to a particular player's uh, dashboard, and I'm actually passing it the player ID in that case. So that's down at the player level. And then when I go up one at the team level, the team, I'm using the same thing. Here's something that I call the team tree calc, and it's a calculation that just does its own nesting. So let me go back here and show you. Up at the team level, I can use JSON as well, but in this case, I've got for each team, I do the same thing, same kind of formatting, the, the ID of the team and their number, the name of the team and so on. But then inside their data, you see it says NFL 2013. That means they're a member of that league. But then down here, the children element, I declare that this has children. And within these brackets, I can then nest all the related player information. So this player format is the same format I just showed you here. <clears throat> but, in, <clears throat> but instead, I'm nesting it within this team. So we've got the team, all of its players. <clears throat> you go from the team, the player, and then you see where this ends. Then I'm on to the next one. So this is one player, whoops, this is one player here. This is one player here, and so on and so on. Until finally, I can go all the way up to the top, or the league, and then I say, okay, well, here's one team. And it goes all the way across the page like that. And here's the next team, and the next team, and the next team. And so what I'm doing inside FileMaker is I'm just going all the way up to that top level, which is what I call nav. It really could be the league, but it's my navigation one. And I'm referencing this calculation. And just like I use in all these different uh, examples and demos, I'm just using my favorite function, the list function, to go down into the uh, child table. In this case, it's the team child table and grab all those uh, values formatted in this particular case as a JSON string or an object. So um, same kind of principle that we've been talking about. Um, what I think is a pretty fun implementation of this, uh, you can see here, again, using list function. So it's really a, I thought this would be an interesting demo to show you uh, sort of the cascading uh, nested nature of data. And I have another fun thing to show you here. I haven't done a lot of, uh, of the uh, examples on the iPad. But here's an iPad version of the same database that I th thought I'd share with you guys. I'm having some fun with it. Um, in this case, I did it a little bit differently. I'm going to use this, uh, and forgive me for the nerdiness here, but uh, for the purposes of fantasy football, I want to look at all these players on a given week, and you see across the bottom of the screen is the week. I'm just going to say this is week six. And for that week... It's going to tell me um, a couple of different things about the player. So first off, um, you'll notice I'm in FileMaker, right? And this is a web viewer. 
And over here, I can interact with which players I want to see. So in the NFL, the players break down into two different conferences. I'm going to pick the NFC conference. You see here, I'm allowing the user to, to pick which uh, conference they want to see. And here shows only the teams in the NFC conference with all their starting players in, uh, in this fantasy football game. Uh, we only care really about some of the offensive players that are starting. And so I'm going to narrow it down a little bit. Instead of looking at all these different players, let's say I just want to look at um, quarterbacks and uh, running backs. So what I'm doing is I'm going in here and I'm unchecking uh, the wide receiver and the tight end. So now I've got a team tree, dynamic user-driven team tree um, on the iPad that shows me all the different teams and all the different players. I'm going to go a step further because of the fantasy football aspect of this. And this, this, this G and B stand for good matchups and bad matchups. So for week six of the NFL season, I'm going to uncheck bad matchups um, on the iPad. And then you're going to see it redraw for me. And um, what it's going to do is show me only the players in the NFL for week six that have good matchups. And then I can drill down into them by clicking the names. I'm on the iPad now. I'm clicking the names. And I can see the different names of the players. I can navigate back up to different teams if I want to. Look at all these different teams and say, all right, let me uh, pick one. And when I click the name of the player, of course, it pops up with the uh, screen that I use to make all my decisions. And it pops up with their player dashboard. So I've had a lot of fun uh, with this. This is my favorite demo. I like the visual aspect of it, but I think this is a, an excellent example of not just a vis visual for the sake of visual, but I think an extremely functional um, you know, a version of a navigation element with a, a great example of nested data. Um, it gave me an opportunity to talk to you guys about uh, JSON data. And again, the technique is exactly the same as I've been talking about in all these other videos. The only thing here is I just chose a different way to format the data. It does have some advantages from parsing and uh, making it easier for me, the developer, to read. Uh, but in the end, um, uh, the idea behind all of this is to show you really cool, attractive, functional ways to integrate JavaScript, HTML5, and CSS uh, into your databases. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching this again. I uh, will be demonstrating this at the FileMaker Developer Conference if you happen to be watching this video prior to August um, of 2013. And of course, more information uh, can be found on FileMakerHTML5.com, and I'll have some more videos for you as we go along. So thanks a ton for watching. Really appreciate all your support. Look forward to seeing you guys next time around.